Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for the joy of the Lord. And thank you for the strength you give us as we study your word. This word will enrich our lives and will profit us and will make us to be the kind of strong, courageous people that you want your people to be. And Lord, we're praying that your word will grant us tonight conviction and strength as we believe. And we'll be able to prepare for the coming of the Lord adequately according to your word in Jesus' name. We ask, O oh Lord, that you assist us by your spirit. As the word comes forth, it will come with understanding, with light, and with a clear explanation, application of your word in Jesus' name. And for those of us who are hearing, we're praying, Lord, that your spirit will walk along with us and will hear right. We'll apply the word to our lives. And this word will be beneficial to every one of us in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that through the study of your word, you will grant us real but born to stand in the days that are coming. Prepare us, Lord, for the coming of the Lord, so that when you will come, none of us will be careless or let behind in Jesus' name. Be glorified in our lives, even today and for the rest of our lives. Open our understanding as we see you now in the world and we'll see what is coming ahead. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And a good amen. amen. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight. We are still in the book of Revelation. In fact, we just started some two weeks ago now. We have been going through the book of Revelation. There is a lot meant for every child of God as the Lord prepares us for his coming. We are in chapter 12, and for you to link up with what has actually been taught in chapter 12, I'm going to read from verse 1, Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 1, just to remind you what you've learned already. And uh, you'll see the five personalities uh, here in prophetic language, and I'm sure you remember what each of them represents. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, traveling in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour, to destroy her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was cut up unto God and to the throne, to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a space prepared of God that she should feed her there a thousand two hundred and six threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there found place any more in heaven. And a great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And it was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come unto you having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he has but a short time. And the dragon, and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. 
And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, and that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And he has helped the woman, and he has opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ may the lord bless the reading of his word we have already studied verses 1 through to 12 now we're looking at verses 13 through to 17 you remember that as we have looked at the word of God and interpreted com com comparing scripture with scripture, that the woman that was traveling in birth, that's the nation of Israel. And then the child that was born, you read in that verse 5, it says, And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. We're told in that same verse 5, And a child was caught up unto God and to his throne. That's talking about the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ as I rose from the dead. And now we understand that uh, knowing the woman, that's Israel, and knowing the child, the man child, that is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, then the red, the great red dragon, very clearly in verse 9, the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. And then we see Michael that you find in verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. In verse 8, neither was there place found anymore in heaven. Eventually the great dragon was cast out. And then you, as you have listened to all this, and you have seen the interpretation, and then you find in verse 17, that is the last part, it says, and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That means the people that were believing, and that will be the time of the great tribulation. It says they'll be keeping the commandments of God, verse 17, and they have the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I just remind you that this is a period, the period of the great tribulation, and it's a period of three and a half years. If you look at verse 6, it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a space prepared of God, and there she should, that she should be fed, that uh, she should feed her. There, 1,203 score days, that is 1260, that is 1260 days. When you divide that by 30, you are going to have 42 months. And 42 months, when you divide that by 12, you are going to have three and a half years. In fact, we are told it's going to be for a time and times and half a time. Look at verse 14. To the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into a place where she is nourished for a time, that's one year, and times, that's plus two years, making three, and half a time, that's half a year, three and a half years from the face of the serpent. And so we understand this is what will be happening at the time of the great tribulation. Israel as a nation has suffered much persecution from the devil, from Satan, from Lucifer, from the dragon that we see in this passage. And Israel has suffered for many, many centuries. In fact, as you look at the history of the children of Israel, you'll find it is suffering all through. As they pass out of Genesis and they come into Exodus, and in the book of Exodus, they had real serious rigor, suffering, persecution from Egypt. And then they came into the wilderness, and the suffering had not finished. And then they came to the land of Canaan. Living in the land of Canaan, you'll see how the kings eventually oppressed them. And it has been suffering all over. You come to the times of the kings and the times of the prophets, and the children of Israel, they were suffering, suffering. And then you come to the time of you know, people like Isaiah, people like Jeremiah and people like Ezekiel and what were they dealing with in their prophecy? It was a suffering of the children of Israel. Didn't you read in our Bible reading today in Jeremiah? Uh, those of us who are outside Lagos were reading the Bible through and uh, now we're in the book of Jeremiah and we saw today how the children of Israel, they just suffered. 
And because of their suffering, they couldn't listen to the word of Jeremiah. Even though they told him, go and seek the face of the Lord and come and tell us whatever the Lord says, that we're going to obey. And then the Lord told them, stay where you are. Don't go anywhere. Endure the suffering, and then I'll protect you. But that was too much for them. They said, no, the Lord has not sent you. And uh, you're speaking because somebody has put some words in your mouth. The point you're making is, it's been suffering all over. Even at the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, the children of Israel as a nation, they were still under captivity under the Roman government. And then years passed by, and if you are listening to the news even till this hour, the children of Israel as a nation, they're still suffering. It's war at all. All the nations surrounding them, uh, they're making war with them. They do not want them to be a nation that will, be, that will stand and have an identity of their own. That's why the suffering is there. So then as you look at the history of Israel, their history has been that of terrible persecution and fairy trials. Their protection and preservation in the midst of persecution has been well illustrated by the burning bush which was not consumed. That was how the Lord showed their leader, their leader Moses, as he saw that burning bush and yet the bush was not consumed, telling us that the children of Israel, although the persecution will be there from year to year, from decade to decade, from century to century, from millennium to millennium, that all the same they are good going to be preserved. And in the passage we are looking at today, which is at the time of the great tribulation, you see still the suffering. And you see the old serpent, you see the dragon, you see the devil still bringing the persecution upon them. And uh, they would have been drowned in the river uh, by Egypt, but you know, they would not be drowned. Or they would have been born in the fab, Nebuchadnezzar, but no, God protected them. And that's why as uh, they read their own history, they look at uh, Psalm 124. I'm reading from verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had swallowed us. The stream had gone over our soul. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snow near the fowler and the snare is broken and we are escaped our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth that was their testimony and that was their song because the Lord delivered them from all the trials and the afflictions and the persecution and the suffering that they had Israel's persecution Israel's trials Israel's sufferings, they have not ended at all because we see in the passage you have read today, the dragon's wrath will be directed against that nation during the great tribulation. And the, the Israelites have suffered through centuries, but the worst is yet to come. The worst for the children of Israel is still to come. In fact, that's what Jesus Christ said. If you turn your Bible to Mark chapter 13. In Mark chapter 13, reading from verses 9, 19 and uh, 20. Mark, Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 19 and from verse 20. See the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, for in those days shall be affliction. Such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days to three and a half years, to 42 months, to 1260 days, except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, the elect's sake who are those? Those are the people we read about in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, the remnant of the seed that keep the commandments of God, that have the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And except for those elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. And as you look at the children of Israel, and you look at all they have gone through, and you see how the Lord delivered them, and the promise of the Lord, as we read in the, the Bible concerning the things of the end, is that he will still continue to deliver them in the future, as he has done in the past. In the worst of times, say, well, protect them. Before I pass on to the detailed study, let's think about ourselves as children of God too. Because we as children of God, the devil too is against us. The dragon is against us. 
because he's right in the world, now going up and down, going to and fro, all over the earth, and seeking whom he may devour. Would you notice in the passage we have read in Revelation chapter 12? Revelation chapter 12, let us look at a verse at verse 9. And a great dragon was cast out, that, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. It's not only after Israel. It's not only after just one nation. It's after over the whole world. Look at this in verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. He comes to the world and he comes in great fury. Look at verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. One to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Not only Israel. Not only just a single nation. The whole, all the inhabitants of the earth. Then he says for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knows that his time is short. Now, in this uh, situation, are uh, we going to be able to have protection and preservation? Let me give this to you. Number one is the dragon's persecution, the devil's persecution. Yes, he persecutes. Uh, yes, he's furious. Yes, he comes into the world with a great wrath. The dragon's persecution. Number two, the declared prophecy. The prophecy had been declared that God will preserve his son because of the elect's sake. Those days are going to be shortened. And it is not only in Israel you have the elect. In fact, according to the word of God in the New Testament, the believers today, everyone that has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the elect of God. And the declared prophecy is that the Lord will protect his soul. Number three, the divine promise. The divine promise. As you look at the promises of God, you rest assured there is nothing to worry about. There is nothing to be afraid of because the Lord is going to protect his own. It says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What shall I be afraid of? Number four is the daily protection and preservation. The daily protection and preservation. Every day, he guides us. Every day, in fact, the Bible says, the angels of the Lord gather around them that fear the Lord and he deliver them. He will give his angels charge concerning you that will not dash your foot against a stone. There is daily protection and preservation. Number five, definite preparation and prayer. On our part, we need to stand on the promises. On our part, we need to claim the promises. On our part, we need to pray. And we pray the Lord has taught us how to pray. Deliver us from evil. That's in the Lord's prayer. Number six is the divine power. The divine power. Uh, the Lord has power. The power to protect and the power to preserve. In fact, Jesus Christ prayed. He said, Holy Father, keep them from evil. All the people that you have given unto me. And then number seven, the decided punishment and perdition. The decided punishment and perdition. This dragon, this devil, Satan, the old serpent, and all his disciples and all the fallen angels that follow after him, they're going to be punished eventually in the lake of fire for the evil they have done against the kingdom of God, against the personality of God, against the people of God, and against the world in general. But we thank the Lord that through it all, the Lord will preserve his own, and the Lord will stay and stand by his own. As we look at the study today, we're looking at Israel's persecution, protection, and preservation. Israel's persecution, protection, and preservation. We divide the message to three parts. Number one, the dragon's persecution of Israel on earth. The dragon's persecution of Israel on earth. Number two, the deliverance and preservation of Israel on earth. During that time of the great tribulation, even though everything will come against them because the Bible says in Jeremiah, it is the time of Jacob's trouble. All the same, the Lord shall save him out of that tribulation, the deliverance and preservation of Israel on earth. And then number three, divine protection for the Israel of God on earth. Divine protection for the Israel of God on earth. We come back to point number one, the dragon's persecution of Israel on earth. Let's look at Revelation again. Revelation chapter 12. And I'm reading verse 13 and then verse 15, then verse 17. It says in chapter 12 and verse 13. 
And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Once again, please remember that the woman in prophecy here is uh, the nation of Israel. Because it's out of the nation of Israel that the man child, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King, the Lord, the, the Messiah, that he came forth. And we're told that the dragon, which is the devil, already we've seen that in this same chapter 12, verse 9, the dragon he saw that was cast into the earth. And then because of that, he persecuted Israel and that brought forth the Lord Jesus Christ. Why in particular will he persecute Israel? Because Israel brought forth the Lord Jesus Christ. And you must go back to prophecy. And you must remember that the Lord said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between the seed and her seed. And thou shalt bruise his heel, and he will bruise your head. And the nation that produced the Lord Jesus Christ, the nation that gave rise, gave birth to the Lord Jesus Christ, since Jesus the King of Kings, and they want to reign forever and ever, and they want to take the world out of the hand of the devil, and they want to judge the devil eventually, the devil is furious against Israel that brought forth the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it says the dragon, and that dragon persecuted the woman that brought forth the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 15, and the serpent comes out of his mouth. What as a flood after the woman that she might cause her to be carried away of the flood. You see another thing that happened there that uh, the, the, the dragon that is when it says the serpent is the same thing the serpent the dragon the devil or Satan that's the same personality that evil one he cast out water out of his mouth. I'm sure you remember that the book of Revelation is symbolic and at everything you read when it says flood of water a flood here is referring to a mighty army it's uh, like uh, you know a sea of heads but this uh, sea of head is a sea of heads of militant soldiers armed to the teeth ready to swallow up and ready to crush and ready to destroy the children of Israel, to destroy Israel as a nation. Can I just remind you, as we have read in the Bible, we're still going to see the references that the Antichrist will marshal an army, a great army, and they will number into their thousands and millions, and they will be fighting, fighting the, you know, the people that will not surrender to the rule of the Antichrist in the time of the Great Tribulation. But not only that, very specially they are going to fight the people of Israel, the nation of Israel. That's why it says it casts out a great flood. That's the flood of the army of the Antichrist that will want to swallow up the people of Israel at that time. Then in verse 17, and the dragon was wroth, was angry with the woman, that is, with the nation of Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That is, there will be some of those uh, children of Israel that will actually see at that time that this Jesus is our Messiah. This Jesus is our Christ and is our Savior. And they will believe on him. And then he'll be furious because they'll be believing on the Lord Jesus Christ at such a time. And then it says he'll make war with them. These people that keep the commandments of the Lord and have the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we turn our Bibles to uh, Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. And let us see what Daniel had prophesied concerning those uh, days that are still coming. Mean. That is the time of the great tribulation. What will be happening at that time? You know the major thing we're looking at now is the persecution of the dragon. That is the dragon's persecution of Israel on earth. In Daniel chapter 7 reading from verse 21. I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high and the time came that the saints possess the kingdom when he talks about the saints you understand the understanding of daniel daniel saw his people and they were the saints of god they were the people of god they were the elect of god when daniel looked at those saints he wasn't looking at the gentiles he wasn't seeing the gentiles and let me remind you that the in the timetable of god this is the church age now one 
and uh, you know one of these days the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and then those of us which are alive will be caught together with them up in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord after the rapture of the church then will be the great tribulation and this period we are reading of in Daniel chapter 7 is the time of the great tribulation the church is gone already so when it refers to the saints here it's not referring to the Gentiles it's not referring to the church it's not referring to us because we are gone already the church is gone already the church is not going to be here at the time of the great tribulation it's talking about Israel because it is Israel that will believe after the church had gone you understand blindness has come unto the Jews right now unto Israel now until the times of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled when the times of the Gentile is fulfilled and when the Gentile saints the church when we have gone then God will face the people of Israel again that's what he's talking about here that the ancient of days referring to the Lord God Almighty he will give judgment and power and dominion to the saints to the people of Israel in verse 23 it says thus he said the first beast shall be the first kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces that's talking about the kingdom of the antichrist because when the antichrist comes it's going to be a political figure it's going to be like a king it's going to be like an emperor in fact he will almost be acting like god and he will want the people to worship him and the religious power the religious associations of the day will be behind him political power religious power and then it says in verse 24 and it ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the force and he shall subdue three kings and he shall speak great words against the most high that's the antichrist he will speak blasphemies against the most high god against the almighty god and shall wear out the saints of the most high that is he will torment the saints of the most high he will punish and persecute the children of israel until they become weary they become weak they become weak in, uh, and it appears there's nothing they can do and it says and think to change the times and the laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of the time that is a year and two years and half a year three and a half years so then you understand it's talking about the time of the great tribulation but it's going to really wage war and really persecute the people of israel at that time in daniel chapter 11 verse 14 daniel chapter 11 verse 14 and at that time at, at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a wild wind with the chariots and with horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overthrow and pass over enter into the countries that reminds so again at the time of the antichrist the antichrist will not just be against israel not only israel but against the all the countries in fact against the whole world and he shall in verse 41 and he shall enter also into the glory glorious land that's the land of israel now he will enter into that glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape out of his hand even edom and moab and the chief of the children of ammon that is uh, these territories will, es will escape from his side they will not uh, have as much uh, as persecution and authority do you understand now when it says and the woman ran into the wilderness this uh, the wilderness is talking about a place of safety a place of protection that some of them will escape and they will run to and then it says in verse 42 and he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of egypt shall not escape and it goes on to verse 43 but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of egypt and the libyans and the ethiopians shall be at his steps and the tidings of the east and out of the north shall trouble him therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and not only to make away many and he shall plant the tabernacles of the of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him that is eventually when christ shall come 
that Antichrist and his kingdom will come to an end because the Lord with the, with the spirit and the word breath of his mouth coming out of him will destroy that in Antichrist and round up his kingdom. And uh, you remember I told you over and over this is the time of the great tribulation. Daniel chapter 12 verse 7. In Daniel chapter 12 verse 7 it says, And I had the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, which held, and when he held up his right hand, and his left hand to, unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, one year, times two years, and, and a half. That's three and a half years again. And then he says, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, that's of the children of Israel, then he says, all these things shall be finished. When the children of Israel, when they have really suffered enough, and when the persecution has come to a climax, that now they are calling for their Messiah. They are calling for the Lord. They are saying, come, come. We are sorry for what we have done. We know we killed you. We pierced you. And we, we did it in the grounds. Come again, and then the Lord will come as a deliverer in Israel. But before that time, Israel is going to undergo a lot of suffering. The Lord Jesus told them, he told them in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Do you see here the Lord Jesus said, go and study Daniel. And you will see that Daniel has spoken of a time to come, of a day to come, when the persecution will be so great upon the land of Israel, when the persecution will be so great upon the children of Israel, when the Antichrist, when that king of terror, when that man of perdition, when that man of sin will stand in the holy place and they'll be blaspheming the Lord and speaking great, great blasphemies against the Lord Almighty. It says, Whoso readeth, let him understand. What does that mean? Whoso readeth, let him understand the signs of the times. Let him understand the imminence of that time. Let him understand how soon this is going to take place. Let him understand how the children of Israel, because they have rejected the Lord, how they are going to suffer terribly at the hand of the Antichrist. And then it says in verse 16, let them, then let them, which be in Judea, flee into the mountains. I want to remind you again in Revelation chapter 12, where it says, the woman shall flee to the wilderness and escape so as to try to escape from the hand of uh, the Antichrist. And I want to remind you what we read about in Daniel when it says the land of Moab and, and the other part will, will escape from the hand of the Antichrist. That's the place of safety and that's why it says go back to read Daniel. You children of Israel, when these things begin to happen and you know that the time has come for the suffering of the nation of Israel because we rejected our Messiah. This is the time of the great tribulation. It's for a time and time and have a time. Read Daniel and understand, then you'll be able to flee to the mountains. And in verse 17 it says, let him which is in the house top not come down to take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe to them, one to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. What did he say one to them that our child, that is a pregnant woman in Israel? The reason for that is that at that time, those who are pregnant will not be able to run fast. And those who have little babies, little kids to take care of, and pulling them by hands, and drawing this, and drawing this, and backing the other one, they will not be able to run fast. That's why it says the Antichrist is going to run after them and get at them, because they will not be able to run fast. Woe unto them that are with child in those days, and those that give the suck. And then it says in verse 20, but pray, pray ye, that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. What does that mean? In the winter, that's when it's very, very cold and at another time when it is winter they will not be as agile as active as able to run as fast as they could have run in the in other times in the time of the summer and then when it says in the sabbath day you see those religious people of israel uh, they have a number of kilometers or miles they can walk or they cannot walk and if it's on the sabbath day there will be some of them that are under religious tradition and they'll be thinking should we run uh, do we have any right to run this far and this fast on the Sabbath day and it will be a terrible time for them. That's why it says then in verse 21 for then shall be great tribulation. 
such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, once again, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe not. Why did Jesus say that? Because at the time of the great tribulation, they'll be very eager to say that they're looking for Christ. And anybody that will tell them, yes, I've seen Christ. I've seen him. It's in this corner. It's in that other place. It's in the valley. It's in the mountain. They will want to run there because they want deliverance at all costs. And now they will say, when I see that Jesus, I believe in him now with all my heart. And the Lord was saying, there are going to be many deceivers at that time telling them that we have seen Christ. It says, believe it not. In verse 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if each were possible, Possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The meaning of this is, you see, when there is trouble, people who are looking for money, they capitalize on the trouble. And the false prophets and the false Christ, they will capitalize on the suffering of the people during the time of the great tribulation. And they'll be deceiving the people and the people because they want to come out of the suffering, out of the persecution. And they're looking for someone that will deliver them out of the hand of the Antichrist. They will say, yes, show me Christ and I will follow and I will run after you. And then it says they'll show signs and wonders and they'll deceive very many. Then Jesus said in verse 25, behold, I've told you before. Here is what the Lord is telling us and teaching us, reminding us that that is going to be a terrible time indeed. And the Lord is telling us that we as a children of God, we should not allow those days to come upon us unawares. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Uh, do you see in all these passages we are reading very consistent when it says 1260 days exactly three and a half years. Now here it tells us it's going to be for it's going to be just for three and a half uh, three and a half years and uh, that's the time and times and have a time and so we understand and then that at this time when these people be suffering the dragon that has been cast into the earth will come against the children of Israel with great wrath, knowing that his time is short very short three and a half years his fury will come in three waves of attack three waves of attack the first wave of attack you find in verse 13 of Revelation chapter 12 and the second wave of attack you find in Revelation chapter 12 verse 15 and then the third wave of attack that will come upon them in great fury it will be in verse 17 but Satan's wrath of fury will not only be on Israel it will be on the whole earth we've read about that in chapter 12 verse 12 of Revelation but it will eventually concentrate on the children of Israel persecuting and pursuing them were the forces of the Antichrist, referred to as a mighty flood, a great flood by which he wanted to swallow up the, the, the people of Israel. It will be so serious that Israel will have to flee. And as Israel will be fleeing from the face of that serpent, that is from the face of Satan, he will still cast the army after them, run after them, wanting to overtake them and destroy them by that flood of the Antichrist, the army of the Antichrist. But thank God, the people of God are going to be delivered in Jesus' name. Now, when he talks about three, about uh, uh, three waves of suffering, of attack, Amos has, you know, this to say. Look at Amos, Amos chapter 5. Uh, this is, it's like, uh, you know, all these uh, prophets of old, they saw it coming. And they were warning the people of Israel. They said, uh, you are going to be attacked. And you are going to be persecuted. And it's going to, be, it's going to come wave after wave after wave. And if they had listened to people like Jeremiah, like Isaiah, like Amos, they would have known. And they would have trusted in the Lord God, their God. In Amos chapter 5, reading from verse 18. Amos chapter 5. Reading from verse 18, it tells us, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? 
for the day of the Lord is darkness and no light. It's not talking of, uh, you know, Sunday. It's not talking of even the Sabbath day. It's talking of the day of judgment to come, the time of the great tribulation in verse 19. Look at the three words now. As if a man did flee from a lion, and then a bear met him. And he went, or he went into a house and leaned the sand on the wall, and a serpent beat him. It says, you know, a lion was running after him. That's one wave of the fury of the Antichrist. And then, as he ran away from the lion, thinking, thank God I'm escaped. Then he met a bear that was ready to tear him to pieces. And then he ran away again, and he said, ah, uh -uh, no more trouble now. Then he met a, a serpent, and, you know, the serpent beat him. Three waves of wrath, of fury, of persecution. And then it says in verse 20, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. Talking to the children of Israel, saying, those days are dark days. Now, we are not going to go through the great tribulation, but I need to tell you this. We as children of God today, you know, there's persecution. And the persecution is a minor thing. It's insignificant when you compare it to the time of the great tribulation. And the question I have for you is, if you cannot endure the little persecution you have today, they call you names and they abuse you, they insult you, they oppress you, they deny you of some rights that you ought to have. Because you're a Christian, if you compromise when Christ comes in the rapture, and you are going to be left behind. And then you tell me, if if you cannot endure the little persecution you have today, what are you going to do? If you, are left, if you are left behind at the time of the great tribulation, that's why Jeremiah is asking us the questions in Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. If thou hast run with footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? If you have been walking with and running with people that are just using their, bare, their feet and they have wearied you and you, you are tired and you are weak and you are weakened and you cannot run again, what are you going to do when you contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trusted, they wearied thee, then how will thou do in the swelling of Jordan? That is, uh, you know, at this time, uh, we think there's trouble now. And we think there's calamity in the world now. We think there is terrorism in the world now. And we think there's insecurity in the world now. And it's a time of relative peace compared with the time of the great tribulation. And if you cannot stand as a Christian at this time, uh, what's going to happen when the great tribulation actually comes? That's why the Lord is telling us, ask the question from the prophet of God. Ask what the time is. What's the clock now? What's the time table? now. Where are we now in the timetable of the Almighty God? In Isaiah chapter 21 verse 11. Isaiah chapter 21 verse 11. The burden of doom. He calleth unto me out of sea. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? That night we have heard, that's the night of the great tribulation. That we have heard is coming. Watchman, tell us. What of the night? And then we are told in verse 12, and the watchman said, the morning cometh. The rapture will take place. That's for the joy of the people of God. The morning cometh first. And then it says, And also the night, if thou will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. That is, if you are going to escape the night, and you are going to take part in the joy of the morning, the singing of the morning, the celebration of the morning. That is, when the saints go marching in on that great resurrection morning, when the, when the saints of God shall rise from the dead, and the people of God shall join them, and be caught up together with them. If you are going to take part in the joy, the singing, the celebration of that morning, this is the time to return unto the Lord. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ himself told us in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 34. He's warning us as well as encouraging and instructing us as to what to do so that we will escape the coming judgment and the coming tribulation upon the earth. In Luke chapter 21 verse 34. And take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with sophiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. The great tribulation is not just for Israel. It's not limited to just uh, the West. 
It's not limited to European countries. It's all over the earth. That's why Jesus said in verse 35, As a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all deceit that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We come to point number two, the deliverance and preservation of Israel on earth. The deliverance and preservation of Israel on earth. We come to Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, we're looking at uh, verse 14. In verse 14, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle and that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent by now you understand what that verse very clearly at the time of the great revelation then we were told that this woman will be given the wings of a great eagle do you remember once again that uh, this is a uh, picture language remember that this is just talking to the children of Israel and uh, the children of Israel, they understand that language look at Deuteronomy Deuteronomy chapter 32 and you will understand the language of flying on the wings of an eagle it says in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 11 as an eagle stareth up her nest and fluttereth over her young and spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, and beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead Israel, did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. And he made him to ride on high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. You see, this is talking about how the children of Israel escaped out of the persecution and the oppression and the affliction in Egypt. The Lord said, I carried you myself. And I took you on the great wings of an eagle. You see, the Lord God, once again, he will miraculously aid and help the children of Israel to escape from the Antichrist to a place of safety. At the time of the great tribulation, not all of them will escape, not all of them, but some of them, the remnant, they will escape. And that remnant, they will escape to a place of safety. He will help them to escape as on the wings of an eagle. It's going back to their history, like he did for them in the land of Egypt. And he brought them out and they escaped. So in the same way, they are going to escape and they will be taking a flight. The imagery of the wings of an eagle speaks of the speed of flight flight to safety because eagles fly the fastest and eagles fly the highest miraculously god will make a way for them to escape the fury and the wrath of the devil and the antichrist and that, that's what he's saying there if you look at exodus chapter 19 exodus chapter 19 and you will see again the imagery the language the picture that the lord is painting for us here in exodus chapter 19 verse 4 ye have seen what i did unto the egyptians and how i bear you on eagles wings and brought you unto myself. And so as you read in Revelation talking about eagles, it's just talking about what the Lord will do. And the Lord Almighty is referring to himself there as a great eagle that is going to get them out of the uh, place where they are. And then he's going to give them protection. And as he talks about their protection, he talks about the wings under which you come for a cover. In Psalm 91, Psalm 91, reading from verse 4. Psalm 91 verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust his truth, shall be thy shield and buckler. And so we understand the imagery and what the Lord, what the Lord himself is saying. And God has actually had a covenant relationship with the people of Israel. And so he will protect and preserve his people in and through the fury and the fire of the wrath of Satan during the great tribulation. Satan will make his last effort, his most powerful violent effort to destroy that nation but it will not succeed and it will not succeed because God will protect his chosen people there will be salvation and deliverance and preservation let's come back to Revelation in Revelation chapter 12 let's come to verse 6 Revelation chapter 12 verse 6 and the woman fled into the wilderness there she has a, a place prepared of 
God. Do you see that the Lord was still thinking about his people? Even though this will be the time of the great tribulation, the Lord was still thinking about them that they should, they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. A score is twenty, three score is three times twenty, that is sixty. A thousand two hundred and sixty days. Again, that's the forty two months, and again, that is the three and a half years. And as you look at uh, verse sixteen, you still see the protection of the Lord. Lord, upon the children of Israel at that troublous time, at that difficult time. It tells us in that Revelation chapter 12 reading verse 16. Revelation chapter 12 verse 16 it says, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Uh, remember once again the army of the Antichrist numbering into thousands and millions. That's the flood. That's the sea. That's the water that uh, the Antichrist wanted to use to swallow them up. What does that mean? The earth opening up and swallowing them up. Uh, do you remember the example in Numbers chapter 16? Numbers chapter 16. In Numbers chapter 16, verse 31 through to verse 33, you will see what the Lord did in uh, judging some people that rebelled against the authority of Moses. And these Antichrists that will rebel against the authority and the promise and the prophecy of the Almighty God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, the same judgment is going to be dealt out to them, meted out to them in Numbers chapter 16 verse 31 and it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them and they as opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods and they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and they asked closed upon them and he perished among the congregation that's exactly the same miracle that the lord will perform at that time that there will be terrible earthquakes and those terrible earthquakes will just open up the earth and the army of uh, the of the antichrist will not be able to survive it and, uh, and that's how the Lord is going to preserve his own people. Let's remember once again, that's the time of the great tribulation. And those terrible things are going to happen to the people living on the earth at that time. And then to the people of Israel in particular. But for the people of Israel, there's a covenant with them. That the Lord will protect them. Can I remind you, there's no covenant like that for the, for the, for the gentle people. The gentle people that will be in the world at that time, good luck to them. Because it's going to be a time of real, real terror against uh, the people of the whole world at that time. And while God is dealing in mercy with the children of Israel, actually the time of the Gentiles will have been over. Although anybody could still get saved, because any time and every time, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But what a difficult time will it be at that time. If people cannot call on the name of the Lord now, if they cannot seek the face of the Lord, if they will not yield to the Lord now, at this time of reality, peace on earth, what is going to happen to them at that time? Let's look at Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 16 as we're still talking about this deliverance and protection for the children of Israel and the preservation of Israel as a nation at that time. In Isaiah chapter 16, reading from verse 1. Send ye the land to the ruler of the land of Shelah, to the wilderness, unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. For it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the forts of Anon. Take counsel, execute judgment, make thy shadow at the night in the midst of the noonday. Hide the outcasts. Be rain not him that wandereth. You understand this? The Lord is talking to the people of Moab. And you say you are part of the land I've chosen. And you see the mention of the word wilderness in verse 1. That's the wilderness to which the children of Israel will fly. Where they will get to. There will be protection for them. Because God will command the Moabites and all the people of that wilderness area. will say hide the outcasts. 
they have run away from their land. They are running from the power of the Antichrist. And you will hide them. You will protect them. You will preserve them. Because I prepared that place for their preservation and protection. Let my outcast dwell with thee. Moab, Moab, this is not the time to drive them back. Because this is my covenant with them, and I'm going to protect them. Let mine outcast dwell with thee, Moab, be thou a covert to them from the face of the spoiler. For the extortioner is at an end. The spoiler ceases. The oppressors are consumed out of the land. It says, you know, this Antichrist, it was, his time will soon be over. And I'm preserving you even more. And I'm preserving your place. And my people are going to run there. And you are not going to destroy them. In verse 5, in mercy shall, be the, shall the throne be established. And he shall sit upon it in truth. And the tabernacle of David in judging and seeking in judgment, his teen righteousness. And, and so we understand. We understand that the Lord is actually going to protect the people at that time. I pray that you will not be in this world at that time. I said you will not be in this world at that time. Before I pass on to point number three, let me just remind you that the children of God are not meant for the great tribulation. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 9. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God has not appointed us to wrath. Praise the Lord. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not for the great tribulation. He has not appointed us unto wrath. And therefore, we are asking the question now, how can we be, how can we escape? How can we escape the great tribulation that is to come upon the earth? Well, it is through the salvation of the Lord, because we are told in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2, reading in verse 3, it tells us, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? We who are Gentiles, we who are here today, we who are listening to the word of God, that we can repent and we can believe on the Lord Jesus and be born again. And then we will escape the coming judgment and the coming great tribulation. And how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard him. It tells us, you remember the case of Lot? And the case of uh, the family of Lot in Genesis chapter 19. Because uh, this is what we are coming to now. The world is going to be on fire. The whole earth is going to be on fire. There is going to be a terrible mighty destruction of the people of the world. And the Lord is telling us now if we are going to escape. Here is the time to make preparation for our escape. In Genesis chapter 19 verse 17. Uh, and it came to pass when he had, they had brought them forth abroad. That they said escape for thy life. Find a way of escape. And there's only one way. That, that way is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the truth and the life and the way is the way to life eternal. Is the way of escape. And how shall we escape if we neglect this great salvation? Look not behind thee. That's what they were told. This is not the time to backslide. This is not the time to look back. This is not the time to be considering dilidani. Should I follow? Should I move on? Should I progress? Or should I look back? This is not the time to look back. Sodom and Gomorrah are going to be on fire. This world is going to be on fire. Escape for your life. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed. And that's what the Lord is telling us. That's why you are saying that you are going to escape. If you look at Psalm 55. In Psalm 55, I'm looking at at verse 8. Psalm 55, looking at verse 8. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Already you can hear the sound of that storm. Already you can see the signs in the horizon. Already if you are studying what is happening, uh, the kingdoms of the world are coming together. They are getting ready. You have the African Union and you have the European Union, and they're just coming together. Eventually, everything is going to become one under a single leader, and the preparation is being made now. And you see the technology, you see everything happening. This is the time we're hearing the sound of the coming stormy wind, uh, stormy wind and of the tempest and of the time of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is casting a shadow before him, and we're already seeing even the spirit of the Antichrist at work. That's why it says, This is the time for me. 
me, I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. The question then is for you as a child of God, for us as children of God, if we're going to escape, how about that? How is it? What are we going to do? Number one, salvation. We must get saved. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But the Lord Jesus had made that salvation available. Salvation. Get saved and keep that salvation. Number two, separation. Don't you know that uh, the friends of the world are enemies en in, at enmity with God? If you are therefore a friend of the world, you'll be an enemy of God. And the enemies of God are not going to go away in the rapture. They are not going to escape the great tribulation. In fact, the wrath of God is coming upon the enemies of God at the time of the great tribulation. If you are going to escape the great tribulation, number two, separation. You separate yourself from all the defilements and the pollutions of the world. Number three, supplication watch and pray that ye may be counted worthy to escape the things that will come upon this world supplication you will be praying you watch and pray that you will not take part in the things of this world you'll not take part in the deluge in the in the flood in the persecution in the suffering that is going to come at the time of the great tribulation of our first sanctification follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord this is not the time to play with sanctification this is not the time to say i'll get holy later i'll get pure later i'll get sanctified later i still have time we don't have time we don't have time already we'll see that you know all the signs around us they're showing us that the bridegroom will soon come for the bride and the bride must be pure and holy and sanctified if the bride is going to be ready for the bridegroom sanctification number five suffering suffering just prepare your mind and there are some little little persecutions that you are going to endure now and you need to endure them because the lord jesus christ has said at the time of his coming very near the time of his coming fathers will betray their children children will betray their fathers and their friends will betray their friends into the hands of persecutors and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall work school but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved number six steadfastness enduring to the end enduring to the end saying lord you helped me yesterday you helped me today much water has gone under the bridge i've overcome some suffering already some persecution already some trials already some affliction already help me for the rest of this day a day at a time a day at a time lord help me today that whatever comes and whatever goes whatever the people of the world may do whatever the messengers of the devil and and the supporters and the agents of the antichrist may do help me to keep on holding on just today and then when you wake up tomorrow here is another day help me today the way you helped me yesterday that's how you overcome steadfastness that's how you take a step at a time and every day of your life you are telling the lord oh lord see me through so that i will not perish with the people of this world number seven service service you'll be serving the lord it is not the time that you'll say well you know i'm so busy making money what's the money going to do for you when the rapture takes place and everything is left in the hands of the antichrist what's the money going to do for you when the suffering of the great tribulation is here in this world and the, the money will not mean anything at that time in fact to spend your money at that time you have to take the mark of the antichrist if you don't take the mark of the antichrist which is 666 you read about that in our next story in chapter 13 if you don't take a, that a mark then you'll not be able to buy you'll not be able to sell money will mean nothing at the time of the great tribulation and if you are running after money and you're not serving the lord today what's it going to be for you on that final day if we're going to be ready to escape the great tribulation that shall come upon this world there must be service rendered unto the lord in malachi chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 16 malachi chapter 3 verse 16 then they that feared the lord spake often one to another encouraging one another admonishing one another uplifting one another edifying one another exhorting one another daily as you see the days approaching and the lord hacking and heard it and a book of remembrance was reaching before him for them that feared the lord and that thought upon his name and they shall be mine says the lord of hosts in that day when i make up my jewels i will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him 
as a man spared his own son that serves him. If we're going to be spared of that great tribulation, we cannot be idle Christians, and lazy Christians, not doing anything for the kingdom of God. We will serve the Lord. And then in verse 18, it says, Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. That's what it will take for us to escape that great tribulation, salvation, separation, supplication, sanctification, suffering, steadfastness, service. I come to point number three, divine protection for the Israel of God on earth. Divine protection for the Israel of God on earth. I come to Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, we're reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away, drowned of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and, her, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood that the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wroth was angry was furious with the woman that was with israel and waged to make war with the remnant of her seed that is with the descendants of israel and it says which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. At that time, some of the children of Israel will believe on the Lord. And as they believe on the Lord, they'll be saved. And then at that time, they'll be facing real serious persecution. But the Lord has promised them. He had made a covenant with them that is going to help them. In Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. I'm reading to you from verse 19. Isaiah chapter 59. Reading from verse 19. So, shall they so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come like a mighty flood you see that and that's talking about the flood of the army of the enemies and the enemy shall come like a mighty flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up his standard against him and the redeemer shall come to Zion unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob says the Lord that he is the people of Israel that turn away from their sin they turn away from their iniquity they turn away from all the evils in their hand then he tells us there that at that time the spirit of the Lord will raise up his standard lift up his standard against the enemy and the redeemer shall come to Zion unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob says the Lord as for me this is my covenant with them says the Lord my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth and nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, says the Lord from henceforth and forever. Give me a good amen there. You see, the Lord has given the promise already, and the Lord will not fail in his promise. I said the Lord will not fail in his promise. Concerning those children of Israel, the Lord has said he will protect them. But uh, let's pass from the children of Israel now. And let's think about ourselves. Because we ourselves, uh, there is a name that uh, we are called. If you look at Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, reading verses 15 and 16, you will see how the Spirit of God, through Paul the Apostle, referred to the children of God, the people of God, the born again people of God. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 15, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything no circumcision but a new creature and then it says and as many as walk according to this rule peace be unto them and mercy and upon the israel of god here is a special title a special name for the children of god all the people that are born again it says we are the israel of god at this time now the historical israel the nation israel the people of israel they do not believe in the lord but the people that believe in the lord they have replaced at the moment at the time of the gentile at the time of the gentiles they have replaced the children of israel that's why he refers to us as the israel of god 
and we have our persecution still now, although it is not as intense, it is not as serious as uh, the time of the Great Tribulation, but all the same, the persecution is there today. And yet the Lord is saying, as I promised the real children of Israel, I'm going to protect them. I'm also going to protect all my children, all my people, the Israel of God. That's why we can trust in the name of the Lord and in his strength and the power of the Lord. In Psalm 32 verse 7, Psalm 32 verse 7, it says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. And that's for all times. This is not just for the great tribulation period. Even for today, as you, the Israel of God, the people of God today, as we're, uh, as we're uh, going through persecution, you can always rely on this. The Lord is my hiding place. It will hide me. As it's going to hide the Israel, the real Israel in the future, at the time of the great tribulation, it's going to hide the people of God today, and thou shalt preserve me from trouble. And thou shalt compass me with the songs of deliverance. In Psalm 27, reading from verse 4. Psalm 27, reading from verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, thou shalt hide me in, thy, in his pavilion. It will hide me in his pavilion. If you are going through any persecution today, to start with, it's nothing compared with the time of the great tribulation. And maybe some of us will feel that the fire is too much. The persecution is too much. The fury of the enemy is too much. The persecution of the persecutors. How can I endure this? I want to encourage you endure. Because it's nothing now. Nothing compared with what is going to take place on the earth. That's the reason why you just need to keep on standing there and remaining there and staying with the Lord. And not allow anything to shake your faith. All this and think about it we have the promise of god that he will hide us in the time of trouble in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me therefore will i offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy i will sing yea i will sing praises unto the lord and that tells us then that whatever may be happening today the lord will protect us and the lord will preserve us in fact we are told the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous runneth into it and is saved in um, proverbs chapter 18 proverbs chapter 18 looking at verse 10 proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 the name of the lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and is saved it tells us in isaiah chapter 43 the promise of god for us if you are going through some of the fury and the wrath and the anger of the dragon of the devil of satan and of the agents of satan now don't give up don't give up this is nothing and the Lord has said that he will preserve us even in the fire that may burn today. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. You know, all these rivers and waters of persecution, the flood that the devil may cast after you. And he says, I'll swallow you up. I will discourage you. I will draw you up. I will draw you up and your tears will not even be able to see the way. The Lord is saying there is nothing to eat. It says they will not overflow you. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And as the reason you are trusting the Lord. That's the reason you are not giving up. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading to you from verse 5 and from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content and be satisfied with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, and I will never forsake thee. 
anytime you are going through some of those blue times again and, and some of those uh, downward journey and you are in the valley again and it appears depression is trying to take uh, over your life and it appears that you know you are crying and you are worried and you are anxious I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow maybe I will not leave until tomorrow don't, don't think about that he has said I will never leave thee I will never forsake thee so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper I will not fear what man shall do unto me amen, amen. the Lord is on your side he will keep you I will be faithful unto the end in Jesus name now in Psalm 30 sorry in Proverbs chapter 30 Proverbs chapter 30 reading from verse 5 every word of God is pure all these words of prophecy that we have read every word of God is pure what is going to happen to Israel the great tribulation that is going to come and what is going to come upon the gentile nations everybody on the face of the earth every word of God is pure and he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him add not add thou not unto his word lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar already we have studied today that uh, there is a terrible time going to come uh, for the uh, people of this world and also for the people of Israel and as we round up we are going to pray because we really need to pray so we can escape the great tribulation that is coming upon this world let me round up by giving you these seven things number one surrender all to the lord surrender all to the lord it is not a time to uh, pull away from consecration from giving yourself surrendering yourself surrender your heart surrender your life Surrender your talent. Surrender everything to the Lord. Surrender all to the Lord. If there is anybody that is going to experience protection in these last days, it will be the people that are absolutely surrendered totally unto the Lord. Number two, stay close to the Lord. Stay close to the Lord. Is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And uh, this one that is running, that is going about running like a lion, it's an imitation, it's counterfeit. When you stay close to the Lord, He is going to preserve you, He's going to protect you. Surrender to the Lord, number one, and then stay close to the Lord, number two, number three, seek the Lord in prayer seek the lord in prayer you have any difficulty you have any challenge you have any persecution you have any affliction and the people of the world are frowning at you the persecutors are coming after you like a mighty flood they want to swallow you up don't just stay there folding your hands seek the lord in prayer number four speak for the lord speak for the lord don't let a day pass by tell them the lord is coming Tell them you're a Christian. Tell them you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell them you believe the promises of the Lord. Tell them the people that believe on the Lord, they are not going to come to shame and invite them to come to the Lord. Tell them that whatever the devil may say, whatever the devil may do, Jesus is the real Lord because the Father has highly exalted him to be the Lord and the Savior. Speak for the Lord. Number five, serve him with love serve him with love if there is any time we ought to serve the lord this is the time this is the time we are at the very brink at the very edge of the end of this generation at the end of this period and jesus christ said this generation the generation that sees all these things we're talking about at the shadow of the antichrist that cast before him the generation that sees that that will be the final generation then the lord will come this is the time to serve the lord with love number six save the lost you have relatives you have friends you have acquaintances you have well wishers you have neighbors tell them just like the angels told lord go who do you have in this city go on go and ask them tell them to come in they must escape for their lives save the lost number seven stand for the lord stand for the lord don't let anything shake you don't let any persecution shake you. Don't let anything that the world may do or say at this time shake you. Stand for the Lord. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall heal it. Till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. This is, the, this is not the time to be weak and this is not the time to tremble before the enemy. This is not the time to 
tremble before persecutors, stand up and stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call, obey. First to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Ye that are men, now serve him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. If the persecutors are strong, be stronger. If the persecutors are fast, be faster. If the persecutors are furious, be furious also in the grace and the might and the fire of the Holy Ghost and let your courage rise with the danger of this time. Stand up and stand up for Jesus. Jesus stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watch in unto prayer where duty calls or danger. Be never wanting there. Stand up and stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. It will not be long. The Lord is coming. The day of noise. The, this day the noise of battle and the next the victor song. To him that overcometh a cry of life shall be. When he will the king of glory shall reign eternally. I'm calling you to come and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're going to reign with him, you need to give yourself to the Lord today. You need to get saved and remain saved and be steadfast in the Lord. And don't allow anything to push you down. Don't allow anything to strike you down. Don't allow anything to make you shake. Don't allow anything to make you waver. Don't allow anything to change your conviction. And you just say, Lord, I give myself to you. I surrender myself to you. I'm going to serve you till the rest for the rest of my life till the end of my day nothing will move me nothing will shake me this is not the time to shake this is not the time to waver this is not the time to be afraid this is not the time to be timid this is not the time to fear the enemy this is not the time to run away from persecution this is the time to stand this is the time to stand and it will soon be over it will soon be over it will soon be over and then christ will come and